Hey guys, it's Kim here with Fairly Fiber Fun. Thanks so much for joining me on another po Magic Potions Bat Making. At the end of the video, I will include the little baggie of uh, potion ingredients, a little potion bag. Um, so stay tuned all the way to the end so you can see that. I did not include that in the previous Magic Potions uh, carding video because, um, actually I don't know why, I guess I just didn't think to. Anyways, every Magic Potions bat has its own set of potion ingredients and you just never know what you're going to get. So I pick out what I think will be fun and we'll go with the colors of the bat, what I'm in the mood for, and some things that I think are completely silly and ridiculous. So, um, yeah, it, it's a chance to spin up something really, really fun put a bunch of different things in it, spin with beads, spin with sequins, speed, spin um, feathers or little chunks of yarn or locks or whatever happens to be in the potions bag. You will get to have fun experimenting with different ways to spin those and I am working right now on a tutorial for how to spin with beads. There are two different ways that are fairly common for spinning with beads and then I'm also working on a tutorial on how to spin feathers into your yarn. So those are both very new to me. I've never done either of them. So yeah, it's a lot of fun and I can tell you right now it's a lot easier, easier than you might think. So before we get into the good parts, I'm just pre-blending here, um, I would like to give a very warm welcome to returning viewers and a welcome back very warm welcome to new viewers and a welcome back to returning viewers. <laughs> Me and words. It's hard to concentrate on what I'm saying when I'm watching the footage. It's very distracting. So <laughs> uh, if you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss new videos as they come out. Also, if you really enjoy today's video, please do give it a share and leave a comment down in the comment section below. I love hearing from all of you, and I just think you guys are incredibly awesome and wonderful peeps. Oh, that was a mouthful. Okay, maybe I can remember to breathe while talking. So, in the pre-blending section, I took the braid of fiber, divided it out into approximate colors, and then carded each color, divided those in half because I am making two bats out of this four ounce braid. The main fiber is Blue Face Lester, uh, undyed, it was called, uh, oh goodness, it was a mixture of white and black all natural BFL, so it was a really pretty braid. Anyway, once dyed, it's got this lovely variations in color due to the fact that there were different grays and browns mixed in with it. It's, it was just beautiful. So what I'm doing right now is I have divided each of these colors into three so I can load them onto the carter in three sections. And that uh, corally pink and the rose pink got a little bit too similar and I had trouble figuring out which was which. But anyhow, so the fun part is this little bag of add-ins and that you see sitting there on the table. And then I've got some mystery wool. I don't know the breed. Um, it was from sheep that lived at a zoo. That's all I know. And in, in a different state. Um, and then the white is Jacob. Because I happened to have some Jacob just sitting right there. And I was like, yes, this would be perfect. And then this fiber right here, the blue, is Polworth Silk and Rose Blend. And I am using up the very last of it in this bat. I don't even remember when or where I got it from. It was probably a Wafa sale a couple of years ago, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, so I'm just layering those on top. Um, honestly, I cannot tell you why I chose to add in so much of this wool. Um, these two pinks, I wanted to use both, but I didn't want a whole bunch of the brighter pink. So, you know, 
fiddle with it and fudge it and it'll it'll work and the funnest part the most fun part do we have grammar we have grammar we don't use it all the time um, this is a mixture from oh goodness creative ripples by Lisa and she is on in WAPA she is one of the vendors I have gotten some of her Rolex and um, two of these I don't remember if there were one or two ounce little blend blends of add-ins so there are different breeds of wool locks some pulled sari silk and uh, words it's that plant fiber flax so this is just a fun mess of fibers and I decided to put them into the drum carter three different ways more as an experiment than anything else the first one I was like this is gonna make a mess on the liquor in it did not as bad as I thought it would but there's not much on the carter to begin with if there was more that would have been a bigger mess so it was okay it went on just fine and while I was carting up the second set of fiber which I have sped up a little bit each time so this video does not take an hour uh, you might enjoy watching a video for an hour I might enjoy watching a video for an hour but not everybody wants to watch carting a bat for that long um, so I do try to keep things reasonable time wise but all of the add-ins portion uh, that is not sped up at all because I want you guys to actually get a good idea of what I'm doing so this one I'm going to use the sandwich method so I'm taking my little bits of wool that I'm adding in and breaking those in half so that I can use um, half for the bottom portion and half for the top portion of the sandwich sort of like the bread and then all the fun stuff is the yummy goodness of the sandwich anyway there's a lot of thinking and pondering and trying to figure out exactly what I want to do how much of this fiber I want to use etc going on and then remembering this has to be incredibly thin because there's going to be a ton of add-ins on top so I don't want to stress my drum carter too much and not all drum carters can handle this I have my liquor in and my main drum the Swift a little bit farther apart than is recommended so that it can handle the extra bulk of these fibers and I find that to be working really well especially in this case I'm able to put thicker amounts of fiber through as long as I'm really careful you do risk um, damaging the teeth on your drum on the drums or causing the fiber to kind of clump on instead of uh, spreading itself out so you just got to be careful when you're experimenting not to let your sandwiches get too too thick or to take your sandwiches and draft them before you put them through the carter which I could have done I could have done each of these separately and drafted them but I decided to do it all in one go because the add-ins I could just throw them on top of all that wool layer more wool on top and it would work beautifully as you will see in just a moment <laughs> Um, I did skip out some of this because it was taking forever so but you get the idea of what I'm doing and what it's looking like and all of that and I did give you a closer version of this so that um, while I was putting the add-ins in so you get a really good idea of what I was doing here's the top of the sandwich one little strip at a time one color at a time uh, just going nice and thin on top of the entire pile and it is an awfully thick pile but my drum carter handled it okay which is fantastic I just got a notification I don't know if you heard that it was a little vibrate 
So this is the sticky part, or rather the difficult part, trying to get everything in there at once. If my hand didn't open as wide as it does, there's no way I could have done this. I can actually reach, um, I think, two keys beyond an octave on a piano. It's, uh, I have small hands, but they spread out and open up. So we're back to sped up version sped up footage and just pressing all that down trying to make sure no wool has jumped off the edges of the carding cloth and is going to cause problems i really need to take my drum carter apart and to clean it thoroughly and put it back together i have not done that in probably over a year and it i've done a ton of carding and it it needs a good clean i need to get wool and stuff out of the um, pulleys on the sides because they have picked up a little bit of wool and things just work better if there's no wool stuck where it doesn't belong. Uh, yeah, you're supposed to keep your stuff clean. But uh, who wants to clean their carter when they could spend the time carting instead, right? Sometimes I will prefer to hand sew items instead of using my sewing machine if my machine needs to be cleaned first. Like, I'm ridiculous, I know utterly ridiculous. There are moments of laziness that cause me to work twice as hard. You would think I would be lazy the other way around, but it is what it is. And we're a little crazy over here. It's okay. I am in a rambly mood. I hope you don't mind. So here is the third method and I have cut out a good portion of this because it was slow. I'm just sorting out the different fibers so the flax is what's on the feed-in tray, and then I'm putting some of the silk. And then these are locks that I'm sort of opening. And this is actually my favorite way to put these add-ins on the drum carter. It does make a bit of a mess as you go on the liquor ends. So it'll pick up some of the stuff. But this way you can get things exactly where you want them. It's a little fiddly, but... It works incredibly well. So I have skipped some of that again because it was slow and tedious and while I was trying to figure out exactly where I was putting what I skipped around a bit on the drum carter and then went in eh, I'm just gonna put it everywhere. <laughs> so that's what I proceeded to do and at this point the liquor in is starting to grab a lot of the locks because this drum carter is really full and it is struggling. I also waited to put the last little bit of wool until the end because I knew my carter was getting too full for all these add-ins. So I'm putting the silk, sorry, silk waste across the entire bat. And then this flax is the last thing I am putting on and I decided, I mean, I could have painted it onto the top of the drum, but I decided to let the liquor in help me out. And so, not the greatest idea, but I think it worked okay. The liquor in did want to grab it all, but that's because this is not, it, it's just a stringy, floaty, wants to get everywhere fiber. And that's perfectly fine. I mean, flax is, flax is kind of cool. Um, so now that I'm done with that, I'm going to attempt to fit the rest of this mystery wool on the top, kind of lock everything in place. And then I've used all the fiber I had set aside for this bat, except for right here. I'm like, there's no way this is going to fit. So I took a little bit off of that bundle and the two bundles. And it's a good thing because when I took this bat off the drum carter, you know, most drum carters this size will only make a two to three ounce bat depending on what fiber you're using. I weighed the sucker and it was four ounces. I have never gotten a four ounce bat off my carter before. This was insane. And yes, I had to really pack it down hard to get it all to fit. Not recommend it. It's humongous. But you know, it's also beautiful and amazing, and 
I mean, just look at it coming off the carter like this. It's just so fluffy and pretty. Can I go crazy long enough? Um, have I gone crazy long enough? No, absolutely not. It's gorgeous. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Maybe. Uh, pardon me, I'm in a crazy mood. I'm not going to apologize, actually. I'm in a crazy mood. Just got to gotta roll with it, you know. I didn't feel like doing anything today, and now I'm editing, and I'm like, might as well make it fun. So there's the gorgeous bat. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.